Hey guys, Tyler here. Welcome back to the 20th Century Food Court within Last Call BBS. This is a game about optimizing a factory that can help you produce food. Here's the instructions for this level. I start with a tray and dough. I can take my dough and deep fry it and it becomes a bowl. Or I can dock it first to become a dough with holes and then fry it into a flatter bread. So I stack it on the tray and put red, white, or green sauce on it. So I imagine to begin with, whenever I start, I get a dough. Then if I take a look at the machines, there's a new machine called a router. It'll basically send whatever's on it in a different direction based off of the input. So for example, if it's inputting a puri, I'll have it go through. And for a papti, I'll have it go left. And the one that goes through will be straight and then go right into the fryer. This looks like a sense, not quite sense eject. In the instructions, it looks like it has two ticks in the fryer. So I'm gonna take a counter. I'm also gonna take a multi-mixer. Because I'm actually gonna have the start trigger not only the dough, but also the counter. Which is gonna subtract one. And then whatever sense, it'll plus one. And then whatever it's zero, it can eject. So a timed fryer. So I also need this docker to create small ho holes in the dough. So to the left of the machine is here. This will take the papti and then bring it back onto the belt. Does it get all the sauces? Is that the idea? So I will get a sensor machine that says if there's something there, then it will do three things. It will tomato, it will mint, and it will yogurt. And well, that's kind of everything. I don't know if this is what it wants for me. Oh, it's everything except for the stacker. Oh God, I heated the tray. No, 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 okay, okay. Um, oops. I need to move this entire thing over just so it doesn't get in the tray. So this is a start. Well, when will I stack the tray? Cause I'm, that's what I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a stacker to put the item on the tray. Just bring around the long way. Definitely not a total waste of money but it probably will work. Oh, I ejected it earlier. Never mind. this needs to be minus two. Why did I put minus one? Because I thought that's how I was doing it before, but clearly I misremembered. There we go, nice bowl dough. And too many active inputs, because it can only do one at a time. That's fine, I will get out a sorter and place it here instead. Well, that means I don't need the scanner since the sorter has its own sensor on it. If I sense, how about I get a counter here? Actually, how about I try this new machine called the sequencer? It plays back a list of pre-programmed sequences. So this is programmable, which means, okay, I can decide whether each button is an on or off. So how I understand this then is that there's like a line of code for A, which is this column, or a column of code for B, and then a column for C, a column for D. Can I just like get an example here? Let's we'll start. Okay, so it goes line by line, it looks like. So if I had A say on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, and then just had it run, it would basically run on off on off on off yeah you can see the blinking light coming out of a so it put different and different outputs so what this means is that I could have an a then a B then a C and a would go to tomato B to mint C to yogurt to do them in order and it would start whenever there's a sensor oh and then I could have D have it go through it doesn't really have to stop I think it could just keep running this is very handy. I mean, it's just basic binary, but it should work. Hey, there we go. Next up is optimizing. Beautiful. I am not in the top or 10th percentile for anything, so it's time to get going here. Obviously, this giant path is not helpful for the cause. So let's delete as much path as possible. So, something shorter here, perhaps. One of these. One of these. Then the dispenser can go around here. Well, one thing I can do is probably move the start over. I mean, this at least saves money and looks nicer. But I think it also may help with my adjustments. 
If I wanted, I could have like two deep fryers. It's only another $20,000, that's chump change. So I need another counter then, which functions identically to the first one. Well, let's play it, see what the time looks like. Fifteen! That's top ten percentile. I wonder if I could get thirteen, though. That sounds insane. Tenth percentile. I'm gunning for thirteen. It's time to think. Question, can I save a step if I have a sensor here and have this trigger the sequencer? Because it looks like I was playing a step by step and it looked like there was some sort of delay. Oh, that's awkward. I need to be one past the stacker, but that does not exist. Or, I could just take these commands and move it a little further back. Oh? Oh! I think I saved the second. That's what I'm talking about. Can I make it to that top percentile, though? Question, can I just do C and D at the same time? Maybe it's that easy. Oh, it is that easy. <laughs> well, how about that? Ah, top percentile, love it. But now I want to be cheap. So what are the mandatory things? Well, I obviously need a docker and a fryer. It is mandatory to have a stacker. And I think a sorter makes a lot of sense, at least. I probably need a router. And then the rest is just a ton of conveyor belts. And I think I think something like this is as efficient as I'm gonna get. And then this is not bad, 125k. When I start, I will make dough. With the puri, I will go to the right, and the papti, I'll go to the left. I do need a sequencer, and this time it's gonna be triggered by the sorter. A, B, C, D. You know though, if I wanted to save money, I could actually have the sequence actually start when the fire senses. That way I won't need a counter. However, I will need a multi-mixer for D. Yeah, D is gonna go here and I'll eject through. And I don't know the timing. Let's say this is the eject. So then it will spend a line here and then a line at the stacker. Third line to get stacked. Fourth to move. So then maybe it'll be something like this. Okay, this is what I've come up with. Let's see if there's any merit to it. Okay, pick the correct time for it to move out. And it waits. I could have this go faster if I wanted. It works though. In fact, it's faster than my first one. I am $7 off the 10th percentile. If I had to guess anything that drive up the cost, it's the fact that I've got too many belts. Well, one thing I could do is get rid of three belts here and instead have a router. This is already cheaper. So it's either a tray or a papti. Oh, hold on. I've discovered I could have the stacker be positioned here, which maybe means the entirety of this sequence could run from the very beginning. Yeah, if I have the output go to the right, then how do I make dough? Wait, what if uh, the sensor made this go to the right? Would this work? Wait, maybe I'm onto something here. Oh, I hope this works. Yes, yes! Oh my God, is that simple? Just move that there and have the sensor work. Oh, what a elegant solution this is. Top percentile. Yeah, everything came together beautifully with this. I'll take on one more factory and call it a video. Next up, we appear to be making ice cream. So it looks like there's a ton of orders, small, medium, and large of vanilla, chocolate, and swirls or twists. And twists can only be small or large. So I dispense the ice cream. Twice for small, three times for medium, four times for large. Now I don't know how to get a twist. Maybe if the twist just means both flavors at once. How about I take a stab at it? 
So of course I will need a stacker. And of course I will need a sorter. And oh, they added a big counter. Basically it's just a counter that has an output for a positive number, not just zero. And it has four inputs. Well, stacker is stack eject. Start will always spawn a cone. I feel like the belt work is simple at least. The hard part's gonna be the logic for sure. Mm, this counter I think I'm gonna hook up directly to small, medium, and large. So small requires two scoops, yeah? Medium requires three and large requires four. What I think I'll do, I'll have the sensor trigger a plus one, and then if it's zero, have it go through the sensor. Yeah, that just counts time, but it doesn't dispense anything yet. Yeah, I'm actually not sure how to register the type of ice cream because it's on for only a short time. Maybe a sequencer could help me out. Yeah, actually, let me try a really rudimentary strategy with three sequencers and another multi-mixer. So I was thinking that chocolate could start a sequence, vanilla could start a sequence, and twist could start a sequence. And then they would all stop when I hit zero. But this seems very overkill. <laughs> you know, I don't care. I'm gonna do it the rudimentary way, and then I'll figure out a way to make it work eventually. And it's gonna look something like this, okay? The first of these two multi-mixers is the chocolate, and then the second is the vanilla. This first one is the chocolate, and its output links to the chocolate. This middle one is the vanilla, and its output links to the vanilla. And the third one is the twist and its outputs linked to both. Uh, this is my way of just making sure that Twist is in fact both vanilla and chocolate. So then the sequence is just gonna be timed and it'll dispense when the machine tells it to. Warming up, one, two, three, four. So I think no numbers five and five, six, seven, eight should be covered here. And then the last one has to be both A and B. First off, let's see if the timing's right. Mmm, it's a little slow on the output. Oh, that works though. It works! Ooh, I got the right one. It's somewhat fast. Maybe if there's any consolation, I'll have one of the faster ones? No, I already see a way to improve it. This is a lot of testing. So I got the tall chocolate working. So short vanilla should work. Oh god, the swirl works as well. There's no way to slow it down once you've got it going. <laughs> um, my cost is actually better than I expected. Only 11,000 to go to get to top percentile. Let's get speed first. There's a couple things. First, can I get away with increasing each of these numbers on the counter by one and then moving the stacks up twice oh wait i know what needs to be done i need to put the ice cream in the cone before i stack but i'm still gonna do this anyway let me make sure there's no miscalculation here instead of bumping up two i should have just bumped it up one so work now yeah that works uh, and it's slightly faster, but not gonna get me an award. You're gonna get me a 10th percentile though. Top percentile, how does that only take eight cycles? Well, whatever, let me try moving this about. Like this. So I think that means all the instructions will come out at the very beginning then. Now the issue with this is that at some point the cone may arrive before the tray. Alright, first, does it actually work? It does. Oh, and I can't stack in that order either. Disgusting. I just need a way to wait for the sensor to move through. Because the ice cream's going to stop on time no matter what. How about another counter and another multi-mixer? And this multi-mixer is for the sensor. It can subtract here. Something that looks maybe more like this. In the beginning, I can count down like negative five. And the sensor can add one and one zero, it goes through. There. That's uh, a bit too long of a wait though, I think. This should be maybe minus 
four. Let's just make you go fast. Wait, that was nine instead of eight. Hold on, could I get away with minus three? Does that work? Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Well, there we go. Top percentile in time. Now, I do want to make this one cheap. This one seems fun to try to get cheap. It also seems hard. I actually can't believe, though, this triple multi-mixer method was probably correct. I'm going to start with a fresh one here, actually. Because I'm trying to think about whether or not I could use a single sequencer to win. Here's what I want to see right now. If I happen to alternate A then B, A then B, would this create a twist? Or is this like illegal? Chocolate? Oh no, it has to be simultaneous for the twist to happen. So this would create a double twist. I see. Okay, going back to my original idea here. You know, back when I first stacked and then put the stuff in. Do I think I can get away with a two sequencer combo? Where chocolate and vanilla are the two flavors here. Oh, but I actually do need a splitter for twist. Twist needs to go to both, where one is a chocolate and one is a vanilla. Both of these stop once I hit zero. And it goes through then. And this is chocolate. This is vanilla. I suppose this actually could be positioned here and this here. This would work anyway. Never mind. Oh, I don't have anything hooked up to the plus one. So that's the sensor. So here we go. Uh, so I saved about... 9,000 for my previous cost, which is something. I'm already at the 10th percentile, but it seems like that was easy. Man, I tried to puzzle this out for God knows how long, but couldn't find anything cheaper than $69,000. And honestly, why shouldn't I end it there? And I got top 10% anyway. It was fun. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys all in the next video, whatever it may be. Hope you all have a wonderful day and peace.